YouTube, my name is Gerald Moore Jr., All-American Division One athlete, a former NFL free agent, and a coach, entrepreneur, business advisor, mentor. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some of the vital tips, tips, and keys to my success as an athlete and what I think other athletes, whether they're young or old, uh, can use. And these things will go across the board. So it's not just athletics, but it's things that I've learned are uh, uh, vital in life success in whatever industry, whatever whatever opportunities that you're looking to intent, obtain. Uh, you're going to have to have uh, these 10 principles and keys to your success that are going to help you along the way. Uh, success is a journey. It's up and down. Uh, but I've always uh, thrived on having uh, consistency and being in the middle, you know, not getting too high, not getting too low. I was able to uh, become an All-American uh, Division One athlete my freshman year of college, and that put me on a different level, put me on a different pedestal, but it also showed me that I had a different uh, responsibility uh, because now I was doing more interviews. Um, now I was being nationally recognized. Uh, I also, my peers were starting to uh, put more trust into me. I had older folks, uh, older teammates uh, that were beginning to look up to me. And now I had to bear that cross of being a leader, not only just um, uh, in my actions, but also in the way that I played and then in the way that I spoke. So here I'm going to share my tips to success in athletics. But like I said, these are things go across the board. So first, and these things are in no order, um, but I do believe that they all play a major uh, pivotal role in our success. And so I'm going to make the cross reference to sports and in life with some of these. Okay. So success in sports. Number one, I put talent. We all have talents. We all have gifts. We all have abilities, whether it's in sports or whether it's in creative uh, writing or business or math or science. Uh, we all have a gift. We all have talents, whether we can speak well. Um, so I put talent as number one. So don't just you know, say, well, I'm talented and, and I'm going to be successful, okay? Because that's not the key at all. Next, I put work ethic. With work ethic and talent, you're unstoppable. You know, those are the two key ingredients. Uh, growing up as an athlete, I wouldn't say I was the most talented, uh, but I always had an outstanding work ethic uh, when it came to sports. School, I kind of slacked off a little bit. Uh, but now I realize that I'm older, I've graduated uh, high school, college, uh, and now, you know, I kind of do my own education in terms of the amount of reading that I do uh, and the amount of work that I put in in different various ways. Uh, so you can't be successful in sports or in life without having talents, gifts, uh, and without having that work ethic. All the talent in the world, but if you're not putting, putting in the work or... Um, Allowing yourself to uh, get better, uh, you know, talent soon fades. Number three, patience. It takes time. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I said I was a freshman All-American uh, in, in college. Uh, as a freshman All-American, you know, a lot of people are, you know, amazed at your skills or uh, the accolades that you receive. But most people don't see the work that you put in. So, you know, yes, I became an All-American. I tried out for the NFL. But that came 10 to 15 years after I started playing sports. Uh, that was the biggest accolade that I had ever received. I played in championships. I've been called MVP um, in numerous sports. And I've played amongst some of the best players in the, in the world. Um, you know, there's a lot of friends of mine and peers uh, that I have, you know, that, that I'm connected to that I either played when I was younger uh, in Little League sports, in high school, or in college. Um, and, and some in the NFL. Uh, so you have to have patience. You know, it's going to take time. You know, you're, it's going to take time for you to continue to develop your talents. Uh, and that's where the work ethic comes in. You know, you're constantly grinding and putting in the work. A lot of people quit. A lot of people give up. Um, but that's where patience comes in. If you believe you have a certain gift and ability and talent, uh, if you believe that you put in the work uh, to gain the success that you really want, then you have to be patient and everything will begin to fall in line. Number four, training. That I believe this can go in part of the work ethic. Uh, as an athlete, I'm gonna bring this back to sports. If you're not willing to be in the weight room 
you're not willing to have a trainer or a coach, um, if you're willing not willing to put in the time on yourself uh, and stretching and maintenance on your body, then that's going to have a, a huge impact in your long-term success. So you have to have these first four and put them together. You know, you can't just have one out of the four and think that you're going to be successful or two out of four and think that you're going to be successful. It doesn't work that way. And we're talking about long-term success as well. This isn't just a one and done. You know, I want to help people really understand that success isn't just one thing. It's multiple things. It's an accumulation of your life. You know, so yes, I could have been successful as an athlete and then just dove off the deep end and uh, not accomplished anything else and just been you know, excited with that success. But what that success did for me was allowed me to see that I had to have a bigger vision. I had to want more. And that's why I'm sharing this video with you guys. Number five, studying. Um, you know, I know we, you know, we go back to school and most of us don't like to study or, you know, we think of studying as boring. But what studying truly does is allow you to um, gain insight, understanding uh, of your craft. Uh, but it also allows you to um, hone your craft mentally. Now you can get other ideas of how to attack a certain situations. Or, you know, me as a football player, I played safety. So I'd watch a lot of the best safeties in the NFL. You know, the Troy Palomalos, the Ed Reeds. Um, you know, those are my two biggest, I would say, while I was growing up. Ronnie Lott, some of the older school guys. And so I would watch a lot of those highlights and film to study, you know, what made these safeties so good at what they did, what made them excel uh, in their sport. And then I studied myself, um, you know, as a, as an athlete, you know, you have to watch your own film and see what could you have done better um, to prevent, you know, a certain play or what could you have done better to make your team a better team or make a better or make more plays, you know, something like that. Uh, so you got to study. You gotta study your craft, you know. Uh, I watched the Tom uh, Tom Brady documentary, and he is insane when it comes to his studying and his preparation. And that's also something that could have been put in here, but I'll put it under studying. It's part of the preparation. Uh, in order to be successful, you have to prepare. You know, you have to uh, study. You have to understand what you <clears throat> what you're getting yourself into. Uh, for number six, teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. You know, none of us have been successful um, by ourselves, whether it was family members, whether it was teammates, whether it was coaches, um, whether it was teachers, uh, advisors, mentors. You know, we all need help uh, as an athlete uh, on a football team. You're one of 150 guys. We can be successful without the walk ons that were helping us um, display the uh the opponent's offense or defense, or we couldn't have been successful if I didn't have, you know, a great head coach or great assistant coaches or great teammates that inspired me and pushed me to new levels or who worked out with me or who did the studying and the preparing with me. Uh, and so teamwork is huge in business. You know, you don't become a successful entrepreneur by doing things on your own. You have a team behind you. You have a team of people, whether it's marketing, business development, social media marketing, um, you know, accounting, finance, you know, the, the visionaries, the designers, you can't be successful without a team. Uh, so that's, that's largely important, you know, especially in our day and age, we hear a lot of people talk about how they're self-made or how, you know, they've did it, done it all by themselves. And that's not true at all. It's never true. If you're self-made, you won't be, be, be around for a, for a long time. Uh, Number seven, this is more geared towards sports, but I would say it's also life too. And that's where a lot of people are losing uh, the battle is nutrition. What you put in your body is what you're going to get out of it. If you're eating McDonald's every day and you're just sitting around, you know, long term, you're going to have a lot of issues uh, because you're not putting the amount of nutrition in your body that it, it needs to be sustainable. Um, as an athlete, you know, it's probably eating four to 5,000 calories, you know, a day just to maintain uh, the energy, maintain my body weight, muscle mass. Um, you know, I was about 215. I was 6'1", 215 my senior year in uh, 
in, in college and I was just always consuming food. You know, I was probably eating four or five, six times a day uh, because I was always hungry. I was always burning my, you know, my uh, metabolism is always going. But now, even as a trainer and fitness instructor, instructor and health and wellness coach, I instruct a lot of my clients that it's about 80 to 20 percent, 80 percent nutrition, 20 percent work uh, or, or working out. And I say that because nutrition is vital to our health. Uh, it's vital to, um, you know, our brain and how we function. Um, it's vital to fighting uh, disease and uh, infections and sickness. Uh, so nutrition is huge, especially as an athlete. But even more importantly, after you're done being an athlete or if you're just a regular person, um, nutrition is going to change your life. You know, it, it really I've really started to focus in on my nutrition and making sure that I'm eating cleaner, eating healthier. Uh, and it's played a big role in my attitude and um, just my overall feeling and well-being. Number eight, mentors. Um, you have to have mentors. Uh, you have to have people that you look up to, that you aspire to attain the similar or, you know, form of success that somebody else has had. So I have a lot of mentors, whether it's personal or indirectly. Uh, people that I've looked up to since I was a kid. Before I became a scholarship athlete, I would look up to those guys that were playing high school athletics, whether it was basketball, football, and they were doing big things. I always got to go watch them, see their games unfold. Uh, then I got to high school and I started to look at the college guys. Uh, then I became a mentor. I actually started a mentoring program at my college uh, for the football team because we were losing so many guys um, coming in as freshmen or transferring in that couldn't, um, they couldn't really grasp uh, the concepts of school, you know, the time and doing your homework and papers and it's a lot, you know, if you don't come from a very structured environment and then you're placed in a college institution where you're an athlete and your schedule is completely structured for you and you have to meet certain requirements, it was hard for a lot of kids and we saw ourselves losing a lot of talented players uh, and just good people because um, they didn't have mentors. Uh, so we created that program and we uh, we cut, you know, down on a lot of guys being able to get kicked out of school uh, drastically. So that was pretty big. Uh, but it also showed me how important and vital being a mentor was and having mentors is. Now as an entrepreneur, I have plenty of mentors, people that I look up to that I watch um, just to gain inspiration from, just to get, gain some knowledge and, uh, and an inside look from. So mentors are very important. Number nine, being coachable. You can have all the mentors you want. You can have all the talent, work ethic, patience, training, studying, teamwork, all you want. But if you don't have the coachability, if you can't um, you know, take a back seat to a mentor and being willing to go under his ring, wing and understand how he was able to accumulate his success or um, you're not able to uh, be told anything, uh, it's gonna be hard for people to work with you. Uh, and so it might work out short term, uh, but long term over the course of your life, uh, I think it'll be a big hindrance if you're not able to be coachable, especially in sports. If you're not coachable and you're playing a team sport, nobody's really going to want to work with you. If you're playing an individual sport uh, like tennis or something or golf, um, you might be able to get away with it a little bit longer because you can kind of determine who your coach is and who your team is. But you will get to a point where people just don't want to work with you because they know uh, you're a hassle. So you hear that all the time, whether it's the entertainment industry or in sports, people are tough to work with. And so last but not least, mental toughness. Um, I put that at the end because you can have all these things, uh, but if you're not mentally tough, um, if you can't fight through the adversities and overcome some of the things and the challenges that you're going to face, uh, it's going to be hard for you to be successful long term, especially in sports. Uh, as an athlete, uh, I killed myself, uh, whether it was in the weight room, whether it was in uh, school, um, you know, having all that on my plate. Uh, and I'll admit it got tough at times, you know, there were times where, you know, I was on the verge of breaking down, where I was on the verge of just throwing in the towel. Uh, and it can catch up to you. You can't get burnt out if you don't take care of yourself, if you don't have that um, 
awareness and peace of mind. Um, so I think mental toughness is huge, and just in terms of being able to understand that you're gonna fail, you're gonna have over, uh, you're gonna have to overcome adversity, you're gonna have to overcome uh, tough times, you're gonna have to overcome losses, you're gonna have to overcome, um, you know, not being the best, uh, you're gonna have to overcome injuries uh, and setbacks and all these things. Uh, but that's where mental toughness comes in, knowing that you're not weak. But these are part of the trials and tribulations that are going to elevate you to new levels. Because once you overcome those things, it just made you a lot better for the next challenge that's going to come. Because we're always going to be facing challenges. We're always going to be, um, you know, not as good as we want to be. And that's okay because, because we're not perfect. Um, but mental toughness is key. It's been key to my success on the field and off the field. Um, and I have a lot of people that want to be connected to me because they realize and they understand uh, the mental toughness that I bring. Uh, but I also bring a very personable and real life experience uh, that I share with people that I haven't always been the toughest person. I haven't always been the best athlete. I haven't always been um, the best teammate and all these different things. But I have been mentally tough. I have been able to overcome a lot of things in my life, um, personally and professionally, uh, and as an athlete that have allowed me to push through and get to new levels. And so I hope these 10 things help you guys out. Uh, if you're a young athlete looking to uh, make his varsity team or just get better as an athlete, or if you're an entrepreneur, somebody looking to build a brand, build a business, uh, these are all the things that you're going to need. Or just somebody in life in general. You know, I really don't like just pinpointing one thing. Uh, because I believe these things can cover a multitude of, uh, of, of issues. Um, but these things are really um, 10 steps and 10 success tip tips that have helped me along my way. They'll continue to help me along my way, and I hope they help you along yours. So this is Joe Moore Jr. signing out. Like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel because I will be doing more videos, and then check out my other videos. Some of them are silly. Some of them are listening reaction videos. Some of them are just talking. Um, but I'm looking to do more structured videos for you guys like this to help you guys really understand um, what it takes to be successful in this life and continue to move your life forward. 